Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Anime Ramble. Today I got for you the Hunter's Guild Red Hood Chapter 1. Brand new series on the Shonen Jump app. First chapter out. I love this series already, okay? I'm gonna get into the full discussion, but I want to say off bat, if you haven't read this series and you clicked on this video, it gives me Claymore vibes. If you're familiar with that anime and that manga, I'll get into that at the end of the video. But what's going on in Chapter 1? Well, the Red Hunter's Guild is a series that surrounds a boy by the name of Velo. Velu? We're gonna say Velu. And his village of Kosaka. In this series, werewolves, witches, vampires, curses, hexes, all of that is real. Fantastic fantasy series. I love stuff that intertwines into folklore. But all of these are the norm in this series, and the chapter begins with the disappearance of another village member. The village of Kosaka is plagued by this rampant werewolf that is constantly coming and eating the different members. He's about 12, I wanna say he's 12, and he's apparently the only child left and one of the only people who has any fighting spirit in them. All the other strong warriors have already been eaten in the past and just over time it's dwindled their numbers down to where Valu is the only one who's left. He's an orphan, he was raised predominantly by the village mayor which we do see, never named but he does make an appearance so you already know how that's gonna go. The mayor with nothing else to do in regards to the werewolf, he can't lose any more village members so he decides to hire a hunter. So he puts in a request to the hunters guild. We learn very quickly that hunters are not looked fondly on, right? They're a guild of mercenaries that specialize in hunting monsters and the two biggest things that we learn of them is that they are extremely expensive and they are highly effective at their jobs. The funny part about all of this is that when she does show up, the mayor is looking down on her because the mayor is a big dude and this is really a small child. She can't be more than eight, for real, for real. And he asks her, he's like, are you the hunter that the hunter guild had sent to us? And she's like, yes. And because of hunter's reputation, everybody's curious about them. So they're all there to see who they sent and what they actually look like given they're such a small village. They're not exposed to hunters on a day-to-day -day basis. Everybody loses their shit instantly. They're asking for a refund. They're saying, Mayor, can you put in a request that we can um get a different hunter? Like they're trying to do everything to make sure that they're alive because they don't trust her at all. And at first glance, if you're in that situation, you would have the same reaction. We read manga, so we're like, okay, she's clearly a badass. The smaller they are, the more ferocious they are. That's the rule of thumb when it comes to manga and shonen series like this. But um, because of the reputation that the hunters guilds have of being money grubbers and money hungry, Valu is going into this situation based off of the only information that he has is that they're terrible people when this whole situation happens and oh I'll, I forgot to mention because they're such a small village and because they're so poor the mayor had to sell his house and all of his sheep in order to pay for him so after they start asking if they can get a replacement she says yeah you can put in a request to the hunters guild for a replacement hunter but you're gonna have to pay the cancellation fee you're gonna have to pay the transfer fee and other fees she doesn't say what the other fees are she just like other fees as well just tacking on extra interest and stuff like that not to mention they would also have to wait for the time it takes for her to travel back to the hunters guild get word to them and then for a new hunter to make that journey all the way back out to the village at that point. So at this point, they really don't have an option on what they can and cannot do. They have to trust that she's able to get the job done. And she reassures them that, yeah, I can get the job done, but I need half of the payment up front. Blue snaps, all right? The mayor has to hold him back. And he, he just starts laying into her. He was like, yo, how, how are you this insensitive? Like, you don't care about us at all. You're just here for money. And she breaks it down to him. It's like, what's the difference between what I do and what a florist does? You pay a florist to give you flowers. You pay a contractor to build you a house. You pay a hunter to hunt. Those who can't do must then pay. Those are some of the realest words I have heard from a manga in a long ass fucking time. Those who cannot do must pay. Nobody else says shit after that. The mayor orders Valu, for whatever reason, I don't know why. He orders him to take Grim. He orders him to take her to the mountain hut so that she can start doing her job and hunting the werewolf. Now, the whole reason that they're heading to the mountain hut is because the mayor's wife, who previously had spoke to Grim, told them that werewolves come down from the mountains, so the best place to set up would be the mountain hut. So they're halfway there at this point, or it seems like they're halfway there, and Grim turns around and says that that's not true. She says that as she entered the village she felt the presence of a werewolf and the likelihood that the one that they're hunting in the mountains is the one that would be eating everybody in the village. As she says this, a scream rings out in the background. So they start moving towards the sound, which leads them to the hut where they were supposed to be going in the first. They find blood, they find bones, they find an axe, and instantly the whole thought is that these are the bones and those were the screams of the mayor. Well, we don't really know that right away, that the bones belong to the mayor, but I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious that the 
this point. Uh, before they go into the hut though, Grim pulls out a muzzle hound, which is called Hunter's 616 tools. My first thought, this tool is just gonna bark, it's gonna sense danger, it might do some sniffing, that's it. No, this thing does full CDL callouts at every possible dangerous potential thing that could be around. Decisions, werewolf close, be careful, it could be rough. Shit, for all that, you might as well come out and fucking help. So for all of that, they kick in the door. They discover bones on the ground and the mayor's wife is in the back room and she comes shuffling forward, screaming that the mayor was the werewolf and that once he had sensed them, he took off through the window. Now, Valu is quick and he begins grilling this woman with all of the facts, asking if the mayor is the werewolf and escaped out the window, then why are there still cobwebs? He also says that with the mayor's size, it would be unlikely that he would fit through the window. Again, the window is completely undamaged. There's no damage other than when they kicked in the door. So you got Valu talking to the granny, trying to figure out why the story doesn't make sense. And you have Grim with the muzzle hound examining the pile of bones that are in the middle of the floor. What we learn is that the pile of bones on the floor are from a male, around 70-ish. Now, again, this dog is loud as I don't know what. Okay, everybody heard it, and right after this, the granny transforms into the werewolf. Grim transforms into an adult form. Uh, don't really know why she transforms on and off. It might be a curse. Like I said, witches and just fairy tales and legends all exist in this universe. So she might be cursed. Might come out that that might be a situation in the following chapters. My whole thing about this, this is the one part that pissed me off during the chapter. The granny's the werewolf. The granny said that the mayor was the werewolf and that the werewolf went out the window. The werewolf is big as fuck. All you had to say was that he went out the front door and you might you might have gotten away with this. You might would have been able to eat both of them. Spoilers, the werewolf does not eat both of them. But keep that in mind because it's going to be important later. The werewolf is big as fuck. This is not a normal sized werewolf. Shout out to the mangaka for doing an original werewolf idea. But this thing is huge. Under no circumstances would a werewolf or a mayor ever be able to fit out of this window. She herself could not fit out of this window. Now granted, Grim does say later in the chapter that the wolf is bigger than expected. But she doesn't seem shocked by it. Like it's not mind blowing. The size of the, the, size of the werewolf isn't mind blowing to her. I'm just more disgusted with the fact that she tried to play off a werewolf could fit out that window window or anybody could fit this is a small window but with the attack now starting it starts attacking forcing Grim to pull out another um 616 tool the pocket chimney which just creates a smoke screen that allows them to run away or you would assume that it allows them to run away but they don't choose that instead of that they run like maybe I don't know 20 meters stop and then they decide to have this heart-to-heart -heart conversation between the two while the smoke screen is slowly fizzling away in the back so they're having this heart-to-heart -heart over I think four or five pages and the whole time I'm like are y'all gonna run or are y'all gonna fight like do y'all have a plan because they're not having a plan they're just talking <laughs> so they're not coming up with a plan and just as the smoke dissipates Grim gets eaten and I'm, I'm I want to slap my phone because I'm like you did all that talking for what just not run and of course I know I know I know we gonna get to it we gonna get to it but after this situation, Valu really has to step up. Not only can he not run away, because he doesn't have the pocket chimney, it's on Grimm, and Grimm got swallowed whole. So he has no choice but to fight. He picks up the mayor's axe, and um, he's getting his ass handed to him. I'm not even gonna lie. The only thing that saves him from being swallowed whole along with Grimm was the fact that the wolf swallowed him with his musket in his hand. So he pulls the trigger, blasting a hole through the werewolf's mouth. He falls out. He slashes it open with the mayor's axe. He's pulling Grimm out. He's like, did you? Why did you allow yourself to get eaten like that like that shit was easy as fuck like are you a for real hunter how did you plan to beat this motherfucker to begin with and she says that you know it didn't go according to her whole plan but she did have a plan and as she's being pulled out of its stomach there's a bomb in it. a whole bomb she set up a bomb in the werewolf's stomach she fires off a grappling hook we don't know if it's another hunter's tool pulls the bomb detonates it blows it up walks away like a badass while Valu is sitting there stumbling on the ground they pull themselves together another heart-to-heart -heart conversation where Grim is talking with Valu like look you saved the village with the mayor gone, the likelihood of another mythical creature or another werewolf coming and fucking shit up is a high probability. You need to think about becoming a hunter. And that's really where the chapter ends. I gotta talk about the fact that the axe itself has been brought into question by Grim. Now she doesn't say anything to Valu, but when he does cut her out of its stomach, she stops and asks him, like, did you cut me out the werewolf's stomach? And he was like, yeah. And she's thinking to herself while she asked that, the likelihood of this scrawny kid being able to cut me out of a werewolf stomach is unlikely so she starts thinking of the axe and what it potentially could be so i don't know if the axe is another hunter's tool if it is one of the 616 tools that would mean that the mayor previously was a hunter everything we know of the mayor is nothing of what we know of the hunter's guild 
The Hunters Guilds are known for being selfish. They're known for being money hungry and money grubbers. The mayor, for what short time we did see him, he sold his house and all of his sheep. We don't even know if he talked to his wife about this. He just sold them both and was like, yeah, it doesn't even matter because if the werewolf eats everybody, what's good is a house, what's good is sheep. He doesn't seem like he's money hungry or money grubbing. So I would like to know more of his backstory in the upcoming chapters, probably down the road. Just fo just focus on building Baloo and Grimm. Um, but down the road, I would love to hear and see the true past of the mayor. If this is something, it could just be headcanon. I could be thinking way too deep into this, but I've rambled on long enough. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have for you today. If you made it to the end, thank you. If you are new, go plus ultra and smash that subscribe button. It lets me know you rock with the content that I put out on the channel. Like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. Comment on the video your thoughts about what you think is going to happen. Subscribe if you are brand new, and like always, until next time, I'm out.